Hi everybody, I'm Toby Tomplay, and today I'm gonna to show you how to position and calibrate your studio monitors to balance your sound and maximize your sweet spot. Proper studio monitor placement and calibration is critical to getting the best experience out of your listening environment. It can help reduce unwanted noise, minimize the risk of damage to your studio monitors and ears, and maximize the reference capabilities of different speaker types and ensure that you hear the audio as accurately as possible. Plus, taking the extra time to set up your studio monitors will make mixing easier and ensure that your mixes translate well from speaker to speaker. To get started, let's make sure your studio monitors are in the right place. Positioning your monitors and listening position is crucial to creating an accurate mixing environment. First, make sure that your speakers are placed at least 8 to 12 inches away from any walls. This will prevent sound waves from reflecting back to you, causing phase cancellation and other potentially harmful acoustic interactions. And, whenever possible, avoid setting your desk up in a corner. This will help prevent the bass buildups that naturally occur when two reflective surfaces meet. Now, it's time to create your sweet spot the middle position between the two sides of a stereo system where the speakers overlap. Simply angle each speaker so that the tweeters form an equilateral triangle with your head, with all three points being the same distance from each other. Then sit down and make sure your ears are level with the center of the tweeter. Next, situate your speakers so they're the same distance from the sides of the room and make sure the distance from the speaker to the wall behind it is different from the distance from the side wall closest to it. For example, if your left speaker is six feet from the wall to the left and two feet from the wall behind, your right speaker should also be six feet from the wall to the right and two feet from the wall behind. Placing your speakers directly on your desk can limit their ability to produce clear, balanced audio because the sound waves are bouncing off of a hard, reflective surface before they reach your ears. And studio monitors transmit their vibrations to any surface they're sitting on, including your desk. So investing in a good pair of monitor stands is a great idea. Monitor stands can raise the speakers closer to your ear level and prevent reflections from interfering with your listening environment. If you're working in a tight space or on a tight budget and don't have the spare footage or spare change for conventional speaker stands, consider isolation pads. These cost-effective foam or rubber stands help to mitigate the vibrations and sympathetic resonance that can occur whenever a speaker is resting on a hard surface. The goal of proper subwoofer placement is to set up your system as a natural extension of your full range monitors without boosting the overall bass response of your room or exaggerating any one frequency or frequency range. To find the best position for your subwoofer, temporarily place it in a mixed position and play some bass heavy music through it. Low frequencies aren't directional, meaning that humans can't perceive the direction from which low frequencies are coming. So place the subwoofer wherever it sounds the smoothest and keep making small adjustments until the bass response sounds as even as possible. Now that you've got your sweet spot, it's time to calibrate your studio monitors. There are two main reasons to calibrate your studio monitors. The first reason is to make sure that you're monitoring at the correct sound level. Sound is measured in decibels or dBs and a good range is generally 78 to 85 dB from your listening position but you'll also want to consider the size of the room you're in. For a small studio, you'll want to keep it at around 78 or 80 dB, but for a large control room, it's gonna be closer to 85. The second reason you want to calibrate your studio monitors is to make sure that the imaging is correct from the left side to the right side. If you look at the back of the studio monitor, you'll notice that there are volume pots, and while it's possible to get close by manually adjusting them, even a half dB variance will make a noticeable difference that could be bad for your mix. So you'll want to use this technical calibration method to make sure that the left side is absolutely identical to the right side in volume. Aside from the studio monitors themselves and your recording interface, there are just two things that you'll need to calibrate your studio monitors. The first is an SPL or sound pressure level meter and the second is a tone generator that has the ability to generate pink noise. You can get a decent handheld SPL meter for just $20 to $30, or you can download a digital version from the App Store, some of which are free. You just wanna make sure that it can do both C-weighted and slow response. For the tone generator, just make sure you get one that produces full bandwidth pink noise. Most DAWs have a built-in tone generator, and I'm gonna be using the version that comes with Studio One. 
Before we start the calibration process, the very first thing we're gonna do is turn down the volume of our studio monitors all the way to zero. Then we're gonna set the recording interface's output level to Unity, or to zero. I'm using a PreSonus Studio 26C as my recording interface. Next, I'm gonna put the Tone Generator plugin into my DAW. On my browser, I'm gonna select Effects, find the Tone Generator plugin, and drag it anywhere to an open space. Next, we're gonna set the waveform to pink noise and the level to minus 20 dB. The last step is to open up the mixer, and since we're doing one studio monitor at a time, we're gonna take the pan on that track and put it to one side. So let's do the right side first. Next, position the SPL meter right in the sweet spot where your head will be, at ear level. Then start generating pink noise by hitting the on button of the plugin and turn up your volume on the back of your speakers until the SPL meter reads 80 dB. Next, we're gonna do the left side. So pan all the way to the left on that track and do the same thing again. Once you've calibrated the right and left monitors independently to ensure they're at the same acoustic level, play a favorite track through the monitors and sit down in your mix position. You may need to fine tune your speaker placement until the sound feels balanced and you have a nice wide sweet spot for mixing. If you have multiple sets of studio monitors like I have here, you'll want to repeat this process for each monitor. That way, when you're switching between speakers, you won't have a volume difference. And if you're using a subwoofer, you'll need to ensure that it's calibrated to match your studio monitors. Turn your subwoofer input level to its lowest setting and power down your studio monitors. Then play 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz full bandwidth pink noise at zero decibel through the outputs of your primary audio source and begin slowly increasing the input sensitivity of your subwoofer until the acoustic level of the test tone reaches 79 dB SPL and position the SPL meter right in the sweet spot where your head will be at ear level. If your subwoofer has a variable low pass filter, set the filter to its highest frequency this will create an overlap between your subwoofers and studio monitors' frequency responses. Next, turn your studio monitors back on, play some bass-heavy music through your new system, and experiment with the polarity switch on your subwoofer to see which position provides the best bass response at your mix position. Your subwoofer is now in phase with your full-range system. Many full-range monitors provide a high-pass filter for bass management. Since leaving frequency content below 60 to 120 Hz in your full-range monitors can introduce destructive cancellations or unwanted reinforcement of the highest frequencies from your subwoofer. Using a high-pass filter on your full-range monitors will remove these frequencies and help you to create a more seamless crossover transition with your subwoofer. For added convenience, the Aris Sub 8BT and Pro Sub 10 both have a built-in high-pass filter switch that removes frequency content below 80 Hz from the full-range signal sent to the main monitors. If your subwoofer has a variable low-pass filter, set it to the same frequency. Then, experiment with the low-pass filter setting that provides the smoothest crossover transition while listening to your favorite music. Your subwoofer should naturally extend the low-frequency response of your monitor system, and you shouldn't hear any frequency boosts or cuts. Once your system is properly calibrated, listen to a wide variety of your favorite music and mixes and make any final adjustments. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope your mixes sound better because of it. Thanks for watching.